so pressure washer's pretty much done, except for the supply line. So maybe in previous episodes, you noticed that there is, was not a hose bib over here, no water supply. So the water supply was on the other side of that garage and it's external. So I'd cut the drywall open there, run CPVC up the wall. I put in a gate valve that I'm going to tie into now. So this is, the install is complete with the exception of this is just temped up. There's gonna be a three-way valve because we're gonna have a mosmatic boom pull outside. So this will end up going to a three-way valve. I haven't decided where I'm gonna mount it yet. You know, this is a typical installation where it would be mounted to the, to the reel like this. So temporarily it's just staying like that. But anyway, so supply line. So what I'm doing is I've already got everything plumbed inside the walls. You guys have probably seen previous. Uh, it's all PEX B inside. Um, I did a prior hose bib here. The shelving is going to be starting here and there's three shelves. So those are going to go above it. So we kind of put it lower than we normally would. That's at 36 inches. Normally have it at 48. I also put one outside, which we can show you real quick. Um, had to bore through the rock. It's actual real stone through the side of the house. So it's there. So this stuff's like, it's thicker than this. It's two and a half inches thick. So anyway, there's a one out there. That'll be for the bucket fillers out here. Boom pole will be up here. And that's where I'll be running a line. Boom pole mounts, oh uh, gosh, where was it? I think it's, uh, I wanna say it's here, right here on this, here. So I'll be running probably some PVC conduit over and then I'll 45, cause this is on a 45 and bore through the wall, stick it through the wall and then I'll, we'll get a custom hose length made and then I'll come through this wall and down to the three-way valve. So that'll be here so that you can choose whether it's the reel inside or the boom pull outside. Anyway, so then I go back here. So the water is gonna come in through Prevost and it feed, this is the actual inlet to this hose bib, that hose bib, and the pressure washer. So um, I've got nice trim escutcheons that go around the, the the fittings, I used brass. Uh, there's a drop ear inside the wall that's brass. These are brass, there's a brass close nipple and a coupler that the Prevost threads into. So I'm gonna come up and over here and then I decided to come this far and then come across here and then I'll have to use do a little offset with some uh, 90s. I'll come down here and I'll tie into, this is where the CPVC is. So I'll tie into that. So right now that water's, that's live. So there's, there's water there, pressure right now. So all I have to do is open the ga gate valve. And I did that just in case we ever get a leak. There's a place to isolate both hose bibs, the pressure washer, all the Prevo. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. So right now I'm gonna do the, finish up the, the Prevo so we can get water. And we can test everything, make sure I don't have any leaks, which fingers crossed I shouldn't. So that's the update. Dude, my mic's on, isn't it, Mike? Good, thanks, Mike. This is a uh, 90 degree union, I guess you could call it. Yep. Gotta do some, some fanciness here with some 90s. Well, I gotta go make kind of a swing joint out of it because these are at different elevations and there's not enough room to just 90 like this and 90 over. Too, uh, too tall, I think, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what we can do here. Basically, yes, what I would call a swing joint, yeah. Yep. A couple more 90s. Let's see what we have here. Might better make it work if there's enough room. I know. So see how much lower this is than this? So that means this has to go like this, 
and then another one has to be like this. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. So it becomes a swing as in this swings. Yeah. You know? So we'll end up putting a 90 right about here. Just like when you have an offset and elevation, you can do it that way. If you can't just straight 90 and 90 over, you make a, a swing joint. It makes it, it's infinitely variable then. You like that term? That's good, swing joint. Infinitely variable. See, I'm teaching you some things, Mike. It's not all about the camera. No. Sometimes you gotta do some plumbing. Look how, yeah, exactly. IBSJ. You taught me how to use my camera on my phone, That's right. and I teach you how to do some plumbing, right? Mike, have you been using the cinematic? No, your phone doesn't support cinematic. It does, and I have the Ghetto yeah. 11 Pro. It's no good. No, I know. We gotta get you doing some cinematic posts. Yeah. I know. I, well, you were showing me about it. I just need to get a new phone. It sucks because my phone still works well. So this is, this is what I was talking about with the swing joint. So we got three elbows here to make this happen. It could be done with two if this was further up, but it's not. So this is how we do it. So then this swings over, slides into that, engages that, and then that's, that's what she looks like. Wow. Yeah. So if I had just turned this 90 degrees, the 90 would have been way down here. It wouldn't have lined up with this one because they're not offset enough. If there was more of an offset, I could just use two 90s. But the way it is, three it is. Spare no expense, Mike. That's right. And then what do you guys have to do? Do the exact same thing on that side. And then I'll need four more 90s to be complete with the job. Three, three more over there and one down where it ties into the CPVC. Then we can pressurize this dude and hopefully it's not a sprinkler. I have faith in myself though. Sprinklerizing sprinkler. sprinkler leaks all over the place. Oh. Come on, Mike, keep up. Mike, struggle here. See, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Mike. I'm teaching you some things. Yeah. When you say lots of leaks, it's a sprinkler. Okay. Picking up my litter. This is how, look, look this is all the waste. That's it. One inch of waste. I'm trying to save Maddie's money, but we'll save this. I'll put a protector on it. We may have use this later. Yeah, we need this. We need this. Plus, I think it looks good. That looks trick, right? It does. I like all this blue pipe. It's like putting jewelry on, you know? It's just birthday. It's what? It's Jeff's birthday. Yeah, we're going to take Jeff to sushi tonight. Jeff's 23 for you ladies out there. And his cutoff is 38. So 38 to, what are we, what are we down to now? 20? Nah, 28. 21. 21. You got to be a legal drink because Jeff's a big drinker. He <laughs> likes to get his drink on. Right, Jeff? It's apple beer, I think. Yeah. Watermelon. Sour, sour apple. Sour, beer. sour, whatever it is. It's some, <laughs> some nastiness. I don't know what it is. But, mm -hmm. Anyway, I digress. Okay, so let's do that in and then. Yeah, I don't think we'll be finished. I'm, I'm, I'm getting hungry. What time is it? Oh boy, an hour and 20 minutes? Well, that's before we have to be there. You gotta factor in the community. We have to get ready. And, the, and you have to shower. You know, that means Mike has to shower. That's yeah. right, I do shower. I like to shower. Get cleaned up. Yeah. I don't like to eat dinner all drywall, dusty, sweaty. Yeah. You know, you, you, with your, you get camera dust on you or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You camera guys get. You might, you're, you're interneting. There's a lot of interneting. Every time I see him, he's interneting. Really, we're, we're eating sushi in like 30 minutes because the factor in the show. Well, we factor in the prep time, yeah. getting ready. Try. Matt's got to get, he's going to have to change the paint all over him. Mm -hmm. His shorts are ruined, his shorts are ruined, his shoes hurt his feet. Does Matt know we're going sushi? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I told him he could come. <laughs> <laughs> So the last thing I'm doing is just going through and tightening all these 90s that I used. So 
basically it's all run except for over here I've got a, the way this is with all this, this is as tight as I could make this in there. It's just a T with a, uh, a 90 here. So I can't get this any closer, unfortunately. So what I'll do is I'll get a couple of 45s and make a little offset. I've got to get some CPVC 45s, make a little offset. Then we have a Prevost to half inch male pipe. So I have a female adapter to put on the end of this, but unfortunately the distance here and distance here are different. So tomorrow morning I'll go into the hardware store, grab a couple of 45s and we'll finish it up, pressure it up, and then we'll be able to use the pressure washer. Mac and wash my car. Been waiting for that. Yeah. I have earned it, Mike. Don't step on that nasty cockroach there. Jesus. Yeah, they're the other one outside. They they take a while to kill. You spray them and they still they're alive like for two hours. You got to burn them. Lysol and a match. <coughs> Let me get my my camera voice on. My. Are right, you ready? All right, Mike. Okay, so you're here. So now we're going to start doing some things again. This is a left now. Take two. I wasn't ready for this, Mike. Just needed, I need just, coffee. Did, yeah. Mike, I need some coffee. I need some coffee this uh, yeah, I'm going to go get some at Starbucks. We're going to go. go yeah, we'll go to Starbucks. Sure. Well, of course, you're going to be in the car exactly. with me. That I have to go get a couple fittings, which is where we're going to go now. We're going to go to Ace Hardware. I've got to get a couple of CPVC 45s to make a little offset there to connect to the uh, Prevo. So we're gonna go do that. I'll get this supply line done. We'll pressure test it, make sure we don't have any leaks. And then I'm gonna get as far as I can on airlines. We're still waiting for a couple of more fittings. And, uh, but that, that should be here Friday, if not Monday. But I have you know, other things to do to keep me busy. But yeah, so that's where we're at. Let's go to Ace, Mike, and Starbucks. Oh yeah, let's look, oh, let's look. see. Remember the bees I was jamming and killing? Well, now we, got, now we have the, the exterminator people came and killed far more bees than I did. So don't send me nasty letters. Look at them all. And this is nothing, right? So all these little holes with white stuff, see up there? They put this secret powder in there. And, it, and it, they don't like it, it kills them. I don't know what it is, but he it, it says it's not really toxic to us, but the, the bees sure didn't like it. Look at them all. See them all, can you see that? Sure you can, Mike. There's hundreds. So the story behind the carpenter bees, I, I was talking to him about it. So they're not really native to the area. So the honeybees, they thought were gonna die out. Remember there was that scare about honeybees? So they introduced these in to pollinate and then the honeybees never did die out. And then they realized these are destructive and they chew everyone's houses up and trees and whatever. So they seem to like this house because it has a lot of cedar on it. So anyway, I feel, I feel kind of bad. I was. You know, seeing them crawl around, you know, dying. I put them out of their misery best I could. But, and then we have these, you know, those are, right, wasp nests. And then over here, there's a bunch more too, Mike. So now they go in, they get that powder on them, and they just die. Look at it. <laughs> Pretty bad. Wow. Yeah. These exterminators were awesome. These guys, I forget the name of their company, otherwise I'd give them a shout out, but geez, man, they're really good. They spent like half the day here, more than half the day. We needed it, Mike. We did. Oh, Mike, be careful of your leg there, buddy. That's a, that's a weight distribution hitch. That shins, shins in that hitch don't mix, buddy. All right, Mike, you ready to go? We're going to go do some, do some Ace Hardware run. Dirt out of the roadway, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I figured if it spun it, it would just yeah. throw, it, throw it aside there. You're just helping the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm, so I'm about, Mike, helping everybody. Oh, they're gonna wonder what the hell you're doing. You're gonna look like a, you're gonna look like a weirdo. Mike, I'm gonna tell him, Keith, this guy's following me everywhere I go. <laughs> 
three quarter inch. I need two 45s, and those are in a bag. They must be sold. So there we go. One, two. So I'm making offset. So right now the pipes way out here, and the other ones over here. So we do this and like that, and we can make it closer to the wall. See? See? And we need a uh, female adapter. We need a three quarter inch female adapter. It's a coupler. Uh, And I'm like, doing it for the people, like, give them some experiences that they don't normally have. Bringing them, bringing them to Helen with us to the Ace Hardware in Helen. Look at all these receipts. <laughs> this is, this is, this is just, yeah, this is just the house. There's many in here. I'm sure Chris Haynes is going to love this when I turn <laughs> all these in. Okay, there we go. There, nice spot for it. Put your safety belt on, Mike. That's right, Mike. It could be, it could be some things that could happen, Mike. Might have to stop and get some some cinnamon rolls at the cinnamon roll place, Mike. Yeah, we'll probably do that, Mike. There's actually a there's a cinnamon roll thing about that big around with candy pecans on top of it, Mike. <laughs> Is that what it is? I'm telling you, it's a it's a special treat, Mike. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Is this Jefferson de Menezes? Uh, this is not. Uh, we're we're uh, at uh, Starbucks. Are you at Ingles? No, we're at Starbucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're looking can to see you give me a, Can you give me a grande iced coffee with caramel, please? A grande iced coffee with caramel. It's not yes. caramel, it's caramel? Caramel, caramel, All right. uh, whatever I, the proper Well, I want to order the right thing. Might okay, be, yeah, Might yeah, be two yeah. different things. So caramel, yeah. Caramel, all right, okay. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. I know it's kind of it's interesting to watch people watch you. Yeah. You're filming and in the grocery store. Producing. And we are producing some content, Mike. Exactly. Yeah, he'll be happy. You know, you, it's nice that we thought of him. You know, yeah. makes him feel special. He's a very important person. He's an interweber. Does a lot of interwebbing during the day. You know, has to make some phone calls once in a while. It's very taxing. Young man has to you know has to get to sleep. Have a Starbucks. Yeah, thanks, Mike. She's old, but she's good. I like it. Someone mentioned I should get a new one. I, I don't know. I like the 99. Well, I think they're saying that you've, you've earned one. Oh, earned one. Oh, gee, yeah. I don't know either. I don't know the impression Matt's rich or something. That he should just buy me a fresh truck. Oh, Mike, you've worked so hard. Here's an F-450. <laughs> yeah, here's a $90,000 truck. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have to go. Mike, Mike you, you almost let me pass the bakery. Shop, Gosh darn it. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to get over. Is there a healthy option, Mike? No, Mike. They're not, and they're, they're not sugar-free. I'm just letting you know. They are not sugar-free in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they're probably extra sugar. And they're, it's an Amish bakery, Mike. They're not keto friendly, no. But they are they are carnivore plus. Okay. okay. Matt's made up a new diet. Didn't know if you knew that. But you want to, you might want to catch that. Give these people a little shout out here. The Country Bake Shop near Cleveland. So this is this Amish bakery. I think they're Amish. They wear the special dresses and the little hair thing, Majigger. It's good, isn't it? It's pretty good. I wish we could get smell through a camera. Good morning. Do you have cinnamon rolls? Do you have the, oh yeah, the one with pecans on it? Yeah, that'd be great. Look at this thing. That thing, that's, that's cinnamon rolls with candy pecans on top, Mike. That's special. Do you want some just regular cinnamon rolls too? This is worth every worth every penny of ten dollars, Mike. Carbohydrate is yeah, I need it. I need the energy, Mike. Yeah. You know, and I like to support local business. This is quite incredible. Yeah, look at all this. I mean, it is it is unreal. It smells so good. I could never work here. No, it's it's unbelievable. This would spoil me. I'd never want to eat anything but bakery stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah, we have. Thank you. Thank you. The, the people need to come visit this place. Country Bakery. It's outside of Helen, in between Helen and Cleveland. I think it might technically be in Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. Country Bake Shop. With two P's and an E. Right, let's not wait till we get back to the house. This is, this can't wait, Mike. I'm gonna actually eat in my vehicle. But I'll eat over this, okay? Yeah. Mm. That's pretty good. I would drive from Florida here just to come get these. All right. As far as consuming foods and carbohydrates go, this is the top of the list, buddy. I, I kind of like these better than I even like ice cream. Matt, Matt doesn't like these at all. He's only eaten a, you know, a couple dozen by right, now. Right. If he really liked him, he would have had, had 10 right. dozen by now, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's a deer right on the other side of this gate. Let's see if we can. Yeah, there it is right there. It's a doe. Yeah, cool. A little white tail, I think. All right, so this is our three quarter inch CPVC to three quarter inch female pipe adapter. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, it's gonna be redundant, but there's a, there's a gate valve already below this, CPVC gate valve, which will isolate this whole system. But in an effort to adapt from uh, CPVC to Prevo, we didn't have another um, one inch Prevo to three quarter inch male pipe fitting. I used it on the pressure washer. So we have this extra, which may have been sent just for this anyway, but so we'll just have two valves. And this, this is an easier one to shut off anyway to isolate. So not a big deal. It's just that, I mean, the other valve was five bucks. So we'll be extra protected now. So I'll tighten this all up and then I'll glue it all together. Hmm? What did you put on that? This is pipe dope. This is a pipe thread compound. TFE paste. It's basically Teflon tape in a paste. All right, now the trick is finding the wrenches. There they are. So this is going to be like... It's, it's going to be like 32-ish. Uh-oh. Got some... Got some goober on there. I'm gonna get that goober off. I don't wanna make them look like they've ever been used, you know? It's important. People like fresh tools. Okay, that's big moment, Mike. Big, big moment here. So what I like to do, is you can do this. This goes on, then this. And then the ceiling ring. And that kind of holds everything in place out of the way. Get some dimensions. Something like that for now. And we'll make our little offset, which will be basically something like this. See these lines? Line those up and it's gonna be a perfect offset. So pro tip, whenever you're gluing, don't just stick it in there. You gotta turn it about a quarter turn and make sure the glue is evenly distributed. And sometimes you have to hold it because it'll wanna squirt back out. So you hold it for a couple seconds and it's good to go. All right, so this will end up going in here. So we're gonna get a length on this. This will go together. So, <clears throat> I know the socket on this is 5 8 so on each side. So we need an inch and a quarter plus another inch and a quarter. So we need a two and a half inch piece of pipe. So basically it'll be like this. Just like that.
Okay, that's set for a second. Now we have to be careful with how much glue we put down this because of the, uh, the ball valve, or the gate valve, I should say. So, and this you can't really twist, but a little bit, it's all we're good right there. There's our, there's our connection. So now we'll let that set about 20 minutes or so and then we can turn the water on. It's custom, Mike. That's how we do it. <clears throat> right, that's good. I'm gonna make a gamble that I tightened everything already up here. I think I did. I think I did. I'm not 100% on it, but I think I did. Do we have a, do we have a bucket filler? We should. Yes. Okay. Jeff's assisting me right now. I feel important because he's very important. <laughs> the fact that I'm getting a very important assistant. He took time off of interwebbing. Yeah, that's about three that is. So. There you go. We don't need it super duper. No, we're just, just bleeding air out of it. Perfect. Yep. Now you can, and you can put that one on there if you want. You can have so now we're flowing up through here, through the pressure washer, and back out. This would normally go to the reel. I don't see any leaks. And the beauty about this garage. Got a drain. I think we're good. Done. We could use the pressure washer if we wanted to. I can wash a car tonight. That's a wrap on the Prevo plumbing, so now I've got to do air. We need a couple fittings, more than what I have. And then uh, I'm gonna work on it though. I'm gonna start on it. Now actually I could probably start on the boom pole too. Get that going. That has to be installed and then have to plumb out this wall to the boom pole. I'm gonna sleeve it through this and then we'll paint it the same color as the house. I have some clamps, stuff, because otherwise we'd have the hose just laying up there exposed. That wouldn't look too nice. Yes. We have um, the high pressure three-way valve or diverter valve. So what'll end up happening is the diverter, diverter valve will mount somewhere in this area and then the pressure washer will feed the diverter valve and then depending on which way you have the diverter valve, it'll either feed the hose reel inside or it'll feed the boom pole outside. So depending on where you're washing. So outside is where we're gonna mount the boom pole. So it's going to go, ideally, this is, this is pretty close to center, which is over this drain, which is right here. So what we've got here is cedar trimmed over a steel I-beam. And these are all steel. I, I don't think these are, but for sure these are. They carry load uh, for the uh, breezeway between the rest of the house and the master bedroom. So what I'm thinking of doing is rather than, because this isn't substantial enough to, this is just cedar, so it's not substantial enough to just lag into. It's only one by material, so if I put lags in there, even if I put a bunch of them, they're going to pull out uh, and the boom pull end up on the ground. So there is a steel beam in there, so what I'm thinking of doing, I'm going to create a template Put the template over here, and then I'm going to drill through, completely through the wood, and drill and tap into the steel I-beam. So um, that's not going to weaken it. Um, definitely not enough to matter. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. I can't think of any other way aesthetically to make it look nice unless I, and that, the base plate for the 
boom pole is seven inches and we have seven and a half in between here. So what I'm gonna do is create a template. I've got a really tiny pilot bit. I'll drill through and make sure that I've, that I'm got, I've got the, the steel uh, in, that, in that distance. It's a six inch bolt center. And then uh, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll drill through the wood, uh, tap, drill and tap the beam, and then bolt the uh, boom pole right to that trim. And I think that'll be as substantial as it's gonna get. And then, well, then I can get my hose length and get the hose made. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm gonna figure that out, get a template made, and, and make sure I've got steel. I'm hoping the steel beam is as wide as what I've got in between here, which would mean it would fit perfectly. And then I'll just have to get a, a tap drill. I'll probably do 5 16 maybe even 3 8 bolts, like 3 8 16 So I'll have to get a, a tap drill and a tap and a tap handle because we don't have that here. And then we can do that. I think that would be the, the smart way. All right, so this is where we are with the boom pole. So I've got, I made a template of the base of the boom pole. Um, I had that centered up. This is the center line. Um, and so what's behind here is a steel I-beam. I think I already mentioned that. So what I did was I, I used this template, drilled some pilot holes, and then I drilled through the wood with a, it's gonna be a 3816 bolt that we're using. So I drilled a couple pilot holes uh, sized up to 5 16 which is pretty close to the right tap size drill for a 3 8 16 tap. So now we're gonna go grab a tap and tap handle at uh, Nap Auto Parts and get some bolts and then I'll get this, uh, get the boom pole mounted. So that's that's the next plan. Mike, you gonna go with me? I'm ready, Mike. All right, let's take the, you wanna take the F80 or take the truck? Mm. No, the F80's pretty dirty. Let's take the truck. I, I don't wanna drive it like that. Yeah, uh, it, we have a, have a reputation to uphold. We we'll get it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna wash it though. When I get this all done, I'm gonna wash it. I might do that tonight. I could hook up the pressure washer and wash it tonight, Wayne. Ace. Back at Ace. We're getting some bolts for the boom pole, and maybe they might have a tap handle here and a drill and a tap. We need some tap aid too. So three eight sixteen is what I need right there. Yep. That's a plug tap. We need a start tap though. Yeah, there we go. He's right here. All right, perfect. 3816 grade eight, that's what we want, perfect. All right, should we go see what they have here? A dollar view. Let's see what's up with this espresso bar. A million dollar view. So we can get some iced drinks here? Yeah. This is, wow, this is something special here, Mike. This is a one-way deal. This is a million dollar view. So, uh huh. So where do we go to get the espresso? They have ice espresso drinks, Mike. Yeah, well, let's go. Let's, let's go inside and see what it's all about, Mike. Smells like coffee. And it sure does. And some nice beverages. And the cows back there. It's a cool little spot. Michelle was right. Michelle, we'll try the coffee. Matt's yeah. not gonna. Yeah, we tried it. Michelle, Michelle knows. Michelle, Michelle knows. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. Michelle's, uh, she's out for the adventure. She's been to the coffee places. Been, she's been gem mining. Mm -hmm. She's been she to Babyland. She baby she's been to different places to eat. She's been hiking. Went to a waterfall. Matt's got the garage covered. Michelle's got the. <laughs> activities cover well this door squeaks it's been driving me crazy there's a few other doors in the house that squeak so what's the pro tip what are you using try flow it's really good for stuff like this it was just squeaking like crazy so a little of this and a little then a little paper towel cleanup see that my assistant and then the other thing is this thing here this one this knob has not been working well. The, the striker and sticking. Let's see how that works. Oh yeah, much better.
some bolts in her. Go up higher, Jeff. There, they're all drilled and tapped. Got grade eight bolts. Washers and lock washers. Yeah, we got to speed it up. We got to get it going. That's it. Done. Wow. Pretty easy, Mike. <laughs> so says the guy with the camera. Yeah. Huh? I just make it look easy. Is that what you're saying, Mike? Yeah. So. Next thing, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where I want it to come through the wall, roughly. And then what I'm gonna do is measure from basically that threaded hole across, and then wherever I want it to drop in, I'm gonna have to kinda do a really close estimate and then down the inside of the wall to where we're gonna put the, the diverter valve. People, I've been working on the snack vault here, getting this uh, little tramp stamp little swoopy do off of here. It's taking me forever. Uh, but I took the Fort Knox logo off. I'm gonna, I might polish this darn thing. I'm not gonna do that today, but I don't have time to do that. But you can see I finished the, uh, finished the painting. I'm gonna go around and touch up the baseboards and the bleed through spots. But uh, I, love, I love this combo. It looks good in here. I'm gonna try to get all this pulled apart and I've got to touch up the baseboards and touch up the, the doors, but I got sidetracked on pulling this thing. I figured out the combination of the safe. I don't want to lock it, so I'm just gonna, but at least now I know what it is. So yeah, we're good to go. Looking pretty good in here. I'm gonna get all this, you see all this tape. I did a lot of masking. So I got a little bit of a mess and it's gonna turn into something, something pretty. I do wanna unbox my, my evokes just so I can put them out on the floor here and kind of put them in position. And then I'm gonna remeasure for my acoustic treatments and I'm gonna to try to refrain from ordering anything for as long as I can stand it. And try to do this in the winter, but something tells me I'm gonna be back here in a month doing the home theater. Cause I think this room's gonna be a lot of fun when it's done. The problem is this freaking sticker, this goofy decal sticker nonsense doesn't freaking come off. I get a little piece Ooh, maybe I got lucky. Yeah, yeah, keep going, come on, keep going. Why would they put this on here? It's supposed to be like a man thing, right? <clears throat> Have like a real man safe, and it's got some freaking sloopy doos on here. Some goofy, like what the heck is that? <laughs> Why would you have that? Yeah, but it doesn't come off in one piece, it comes off in a million. I get this going, I tried the heat gun, that doesn't help. And so I can only pull like little pieces at a time. Maybe I'll get lucky now with the cameras here. Maybe it'll, yeah, see. So I had that there. There was a swoopies in the corners. There was lines up and down the thing. Like what in the world are they thinking? Somebody had to put this on here. Like this is a Fort Knox thing. It's probably an extra option. It's the classic gold option. I opt to not have this. And then it sticks to your fingers and my thumbs are hurting. I need to just quit doing this and get back to work. But now it's halfway done and I gotta finish the job. All right, so what we're doing here is this is gonna be the sleeving for the pressure washer hose that feeds the uh, boom pole. We didn't, rather than having a hose like all wonky up here, using the PVC conduit, um, we'll paint it brown so it blends, and uh, yeah, we'll sleep. We'll run the hose through it right to the to the boom pole, and then I'm gonna come here in 45. This tape line indicates where I want to come in because the pressure washer is on the other side of this wall where I want the hose to come through the wall and straight down to the to the uh, to the three-way valve. So I'm gonna make a turn, probably have to cut this, make a turn and 45 it right into that wall. What are they, what are, what are people actually gonna do with those tools, yeah. Matt? What's the point of putting tools in front of them? This is what it's like to be Matt around. Mormon. Yeah. You know? Like, oh shoot, this is a sprinter lift. Let me try it out. Yep. I think, I think, I think whoever stays here can start 
they can they can start calling their wife Shelly, right off the bat. <laughs> their kids, if they got a boy to grow, it's Kate and Ryan for the week. You know. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, on the video of the kitchen. Yeah. Um, the one, like the unlisted video for. I'm gonna say, look. First thing you need to do when you walk in here, you need to sit your wife down at the, at the countertop there and say, "Do not touch the knives." Touch these knives. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. Cut your arm off. <laughs> yeah. And you know, unless your wife's a chef or a ninja, tell her not to touch the knives. Get out that good cook, little one with the serrated one. You, yeah. You, you barely saw through. You'd have yeah. to saw through your finger for an hour. Sure, sure. Yeah. Either that or have 911 on speed dial. Plenty of bandages. Sure some of the wives will be offended, but yeah. Michelle's like you're right because she didn't believe me. And she's cut herself three times with the. With the good no, they're razor sharp, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be good videos. It's not good. You're gonna film me get some tea, Mike. Yeah. I need some tea. See how much easier the door opens now. Mike, are you filming that? Yeah. I think people are gonna be interested in watching <laughs> me serve myself some unsweetened tea. People look up to you. That's how thick the stone is we just went through. So I'll tell you exactly how thick it is. Two and a sixteenth, two and an eighth, yeah, actually two and an eighth inches. Pretty thick. Now we're not done yet. I still have to go through the cement. Board there, so we're through a layer of that. This is a this is probably the strongest wall in the house. It's got double drywall on the inside, double five eighths drywall. It's got steel beams in here. Plus, yeah, man, your lens is full of it. That's it. It's as far as I can go with this. All right. come out with a hose down the wall. So I, I laid it out so it'd come right between here, down and then I'll, the valve will be here. Like that, Mike. Got it. So we need one more clamp. I'll put a clamp right here, hold that up there, and it'll go right in there. Like fanciness, Mike. That's beautiful. That's it right there, Michael. You like them apples, Mike. That's 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 one way to do it. That's the custom custom, Mike. That's how that's how we do it, right? No uh, halfway nothing. And that garbage really does stink. It's bad, dude. I'm like, that is that is ripe a there. <laughs> Oh, Mike. noob, noob. Should have kept that in, Mike. Total noob. I think we're good. Now I need to measure so I can get the correct hose length. So we need an accurate measurement here. Looks super duper accurate. We, we make custom hoses, Mike. We do, Mike. We do make custom hoses. Yeah. 
any length you want. But you know what we need is a second ladder. Yeah. Matt's got the other one. Yeah, it's 11 inches. Plus 11. Oh man, got this all dirty. All right, so 11, then. Come out of here. Add about an inch for the radius. So it needs to be 226 and a half inches. Okay. To be precise. So I'll make it 227. Yeah, okay. 228 inches for that one and 11 inches and this one's correct. So I'll call the morning, get our custom hose from Obsessed Garage made, have, them, have Trevor bring it up tomorrow night and then we can have this done. I can, we can wash cars outside or inside. Does that sound like a plan, Mike? I'm gonna call it a night, Mike.